Okay guys, so I'll try to explain how KDBC is working right now and we can take it from there. So I'll start by creating a project based on Gradle with the Kotlin plugin. I'm gonna move real quick with the non-essentials here. So we need, for now we need Maven local since uh, KDBC is only in my local repo. We're also gonna need to build a war because I'm gonna try to showcase this in the Java EE application actually. And we need the compile dependency on KDBC. So that would be no tornado KDBC 1.0 snapshots. And we need a provided compile dependency on Java EE. I think. So we got Java EE, but no KDBC. Even though I have Maven local, okay. Yeah, sorry. That should do it. So we got KDBC, we got Java EE, and some other dependencies that it pulls in, and also the Kotlin uh, runtime and standard libs. So first we'll create, let's remove this, a package for models, and we'll create a customer object inside here. So models and customer. Customer class will be real simple for now, just an ID and uh, name. And uh, we'd also like to create an object that can uh, um, represent our customer table in the database. So that will be called customer table. It will extend table. And here we'll give it the name of the actual table. This will contain two columns representing the same, same data we have in the customer object. So we do, like, do it like this. ID by column. This lambda is used to extract the value from the result set. So for the ID, we will use result set dot get int, and the actual column name is provided in the the default parameter to this uh, lambda. So this is how we extract the ID from a result set. Uh, same for the name column. That's going to be a string. Now it would be nice to have a constructor for customer that can take a customer table and populate those fields. So we'll add that at once. We'll call it a table, customer table. We'll call the other constructor. And from the table, we'll extract the ID value and the name value. So that's it. I'm gonna showcase um, uh, a REST API as well. So we'll add a function here called uh, toJSON that will Create a JSON builder, object builder, add ID and name, and then build it. We'll get back to this. Now we can define some queries. So first I'm gonna create a select query. So I'll call it select customer. It's gonna be a query and it's gonna return a customer. Now it says that we need to uh, implement this map function. And this will be quite easy for us uh, because what we want to do, every time we get a result, we're going to call customer and um, in this constructor, we're going to pass a customer table. This customer table, we're just actually going to define here. We're going to call it C. Uh, I'll get back to how this works. But basically, every time we get a result set, this customer will also know about this result set, so I can just pass it into the customer object. Now let's set up a basic select. We'll start by selecting all the columns from customer, from the customer table. Now we can have multiple selects inside the select customer class. So we'll make a convenience function to select by ID. I should take an int. We're actually now gonna augment this 
query that we set up in the init block, adding some stuff to it. I'm going to use let and then say where customer ID equals ID. And uh, we will return the first result in the by ID function. That's it for the select customer. Now we also need um, an insert customer, for example. I don't think we're going to use it in this demo, but I'll show you how it would look. Insert customer, which will be an insert. This one does not require a map. Mm -hmm. And uh, the insert will be set up like this insert into C. So we'll need a customer table here as well, a reference. And uh, we will set, oh, let's take a customer here as well. So we can actually get data from somewhere to insert. We will set the ID to customer ID and uh, the same with name. So that's it for now. We got our query set up. So next we will need a service. Put it in services and we'll call it customer service. This might be uh, over engineering for this small application, but um, we'll do it anyway to, to show how you would probably do it as your application grows. So this will be a stateless session bean. It will have a function to uh, list customers. We'll return a list of customer. How can we do that? Okay, so we know we're going to need a database connection. We'll inject a resource. And we'll use the default data source provided by the Java E container. Every Java E container has to provide a default data source, and we'll just use this. And uh, to list customers, uh, we will need to get a hold of the customer select we created. So select customer. And uh, uh, this needs to have a database connection to operate. So we'll give it this data source. And then we'll call the list function. And uh, since we're in Kotlin, we can remove all this. Make it a bit more concise. Now the get by ID function takes an int and it returns mostly the same, uh, but we'll call by ID um, with the ID. This is required by uh, Java E so that Java E can, um, can proxy this bean. So we got our service set up. Now we can add a REST interface. We need to configure REST in Java E. That's quite easy. We'll create a REST application class. It needs to extend application. It needs to have an application path. Application path. So we'll mount the API on slash API. That's actually all it needs. So this is how you configure uh, REST in a Java E application. Uh, now we need a, a resource. I'll call it customer resource. This will be mounted on API slash customers. And if you just call get on that, we will list all customers for you and we will return a JSON array. Now this also needs to be open and we need to inject our customer service to get to the data. So how we would do this? Customer service list. We need to create a JSON array so let's set up an array builder and after we're done with it we're just going to return this as JSON. So with each customer in the list we will iterate, we will add them to the JSON by calling it to JSON, the nice function we created earlier. So this should be it. To get uh, a specific customer we will add a function for that as well. This will be mounted on customers slash and some ID. 
So the by ID function will take an ID, but this will be a path param. And uh, this is quite simple, so we'll just use by ID to JSON. That should be it. What did we forget? Yeah, we need some test data and we need to create a table. So I will create in services, I will create a class called uh, test data. This will be a singleton and it will uh, be uh, created at startup even though nobody will call it. I'll create a post construct function to uh, initialize our data. And this also needs a uh, database connection, of course, to be able to insert something. So this will be a data source injected. Now with this data source, we can uh, execute some, some uh, SQL queries. So we will drop table if exists customer. And then we will add the table, create table customer. It will have a ID, integer, not no primary key, auto increment. And it will also have a name text. Now we can insert some data. This really has nothing to do with KDBC, but the KDBC does provide this execute function that uh, just uh, prepares a statement and uh, execute it executes it so for ad hoc stuff like this we'll so insert a couple of uh, customers insert into customer values well we'll just insert the name actually since we have an alter increment so it will be John and uh, Jill okay now to run this application we will need a JBoss server and I have one installed, so I'll just use this, call this demo. And we will deploy our application. All right. Now we can try to run it, see how it goes. So if we're lucky now, uh, this data will be uh, uh, created for us. The table will be created and the data will be inserted. And then the API should be available. So actually what we can do is say that after startup we want to go to API customers that's where we would list the customers let's see if the container starts I did something wrong I think so test data has to be open as well. And probably this function here. Now I'll just do redeploy instead of restarting the server. Let's see what we get. Now that looks better. So it almost worked. What I forgot was uh, on uh, the resource, I have to say that I want to produce JSON data. Let's redeploy. Cool, we got our data. Should also be able to go to slash one to get John and slash two to get Jill. All right, so I didn't uh, talk much about the actual query syntax and stuff, but I just wanted to show you how you could get set up to play with this.